no way I'm doing this again. I've got to try again for the laughs. I like that. I like that one. A GUI probably would be useful to listing specific tracks with a specific car. Actually, no, no. Do you know what? The lowest level I want is 12 tracks. The lowest level that could even be argued for is six tracks. So I think the lowest level that we care about is being able to display all, say, this run. Norway, in group four, in the snow. Because that's realistically the only things I think you could probably want to compare. Now there are going to be people that want to probably compare six tracks. Which would be, you know, all forward stages. But like, at the point where you're comparing six tracks, you can go into the bloody game and add them up manually rather than having your leaderboards.txt split them out you know at least with this many at least with 12 stages it is a bit of a who fart, a, a farting around to print it out so that's probably the closest that would actually matter the, the other option is that we stick it to being like full game comparison and the only option you've got is do you have Australia and do you want to include um, basically are we future proofing it I say we are you future proofing it and you can search for anything with really fine granularity or do you basically just say because I think it's only fair that you allow people to say only dry times, only wet times, or both, and that you allow people to say, I don't, definitely I don't want Australia, because it's DLC. Also, only want 
um, only want regular groups. Don't want login truck, don't want bonus, or only want bonus. But not only want Australia, because if you've got Australia... Well, yeah, only, only want Australia is fair enough, because we per country is a thing. But, like, it's either all a single country... I think granularity is probably better. Yeah, it's a search engine for a single text file. Look, I actually might implement it if you don't. It'll be horrible. It'll be wrapped in ifs around ifs and switch cases and stuff like that. But... I don't care if it's performant as long as it takes less than a noticeable amount of time. Source code bigger than the file itself takes longer to run than it would take you with a hand calculator to add it all up. See that's the test, it's only got to take less time to run than it would take me to type it up with a hand calculator. And I've only got to run it as many times as it took me to, uh, like, to make the difference of how long it took me to make it. So however long I spend on the programming side of it, I've got to run it enough times, which at the minute I definitely have, because you made the entire thing and I just edited a tiny bit of it. Um... <laughs> Because my only thought would, like the only way that I would be able to do it, would be to set the input and then have it as if input contain, if, if list of stages, or list of countries contains the thing, the, you know, the user spams in the country they want. with the options of all Finland uh, all every single country I mean listing four specific tracks would be bru would be cool but that seems like way too much yeah specific track I, like it's more for whole countries but the, the problem is some people hate rain if people didn't hate rain this would be so much easier because then you could just say it's countries but I want I do kind of want people to be able to compare their times because something I really like about Mario Kart is the average finish and the fact that people try to grind their times below like, it, th there's a challenge in Mario Kart, I think it's Mario Kart DS, or it might be Mario Kart Wii, but getting under, I think it's an hour, or 90 minutes, or something like that. Mario Kart DS, I'm pretty sure it's getting under, in fact, let me check my, let me check where I am, because I haven't done it. So, MKDS, my page... No, I've done it. Never mind. Must be Mario Kart Wii then. What's my Mario Kart Wii? Okay, Wii. BP. Yes, Mario Kart Wii. Sub hour. Let me just check that that is actually possible. So 
So Logan's got the best AF. Yeah, Silbao was well possible. He's got 46. So... Yeah, so there's there's a thing in Mario Kart Wii. The challenge is to go sub hour with all of your times added up. And I think that's cool. I think that people should be, you know, aiming for that kind of total time, lowest total time to finish X amount of stages in the game. But not every, like, it's such a brutal challenge to try and have the, I, like, I want the lowest time known on every track in the game, bonus stages and everything included. However, I know that if Frankie were to come in and just finish off his list of times, he's going to have faster times than me. But it's whether he does ever do that. That's the key. But to compare, you know, for people to compare times in like the dry and the wet I, I think the bare minimum I'd like to add would be that you can take out the bonus vehicles you can have all vehicles only regular groups or only bonus vehicles and that you can take out Australia that would be the bare minimum take out Australia and you can say all con all weathers just dry or just wet And I think I'd probably be happy with that. And then that would be separate. Because that's like we've got per group at the minute. Because that's what we... At the minute it's per, each country... You can see each country's time total. And each group's time total for all... Each group's time total for all countries, and each country's time total for all groups. So it'd be nice to be able to break that down some more with wet and dry. I don't know. I want to. I want people to be able to compare their times across a myriad. Because there's people who are going for like top ten across every uh, every category, uh, every category in a country, and it would be cool for like two people who are going for that to be able to compare their times versus each other. What's that? Yes, so that doesn't work properly. That website. Uh, the problem with that website is what happened to not being able to log in? I could, I sure I had a login on that. So that website, the one that's the world records by Doma. The problem with that is it only knows if you've got a top 10 because it can only page the um, it can only page the top 10 for the world for the records so because I, I had a look at it and was like I had a vaguely plausible entry for the tri-wheeler because I've got top 10s on everything on the tri-wheeler because no one plays the tri-wheeler bar a couple of tracks like the first track in the game and that sort of thing but like the first track of probably all the base model of the game uh, I've got top 10s on and I've probably got a couple of top 10s in those just happenstance it's only like 20 decent people have done them and I happen to get a decent time so yeah it's not it's not able to do that, unfortunately. Because single tracks and like six tracks, people can fucking add it up. But I just like that idea that people compete over large amounts of tracks. Because I enjoy competing. Like, when I do Mario Kart, I'm not trying to set a world record or a, a top time. I'm just trying to keep... I actually try to keep everything fairly even. Like, I'll set myself a goal, which will be to get a, a track to the next standard, the next kind of goal time, as it were. And then I'll ditch that track, and I'll go play another track. Or I'll, or I'll look for like a second break. I'll try and break break a certain second barrier. 
Then I'll take my next worst ranking track. And I'll try and improve the, the worst ranking track I've got. Constantly, you know, improving the worst ranking tracks. Because I don't dislike any... Pretty much everyone always has the thing of like, Oh, I dislike this track and I like this track. And for the most part, I never really have that in a game. There's of course tracks that I prefer and styles that I prefer and things like that. But when you're really pushing, like... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. There's definitely tracks that can be frustrating. And there are things like shortcuts that can make a track something you don't enjoy playing. But I think non-shortcut, I have not found a track I dislike properly. Properly, properly. I fucking hated. I can't even remember what track it was now. Dry, de dry Dry Desert. Dry Dry Desert was the last track I completed in Mario Kart Wii that I beat the Staff Ghost on. I hated that track at the time because of two reasons. One, it's a difficult track to get a run actually going on. Uh, there's so many little things that can go wrong and so many things where if you're not quite set up right, you just get bounced off into the ether and lose all your speed and whatnot. Number two, the Staff Ghost on that one is actually really difficult. However, I don't really hate, hate that track. And especially like playing it online or in non, non one lap time trial settings, or not one lap, but non time trial settings, I enjoy it. I enjoy that track. I like playing against friends now because I, even if you fuck the shortcut up, it's still faster. It's not fast enough to get a proper, sp proper speed run time, but it's still faster than your mates are gonna go. So when you're playing it versus your mates online, who don't know the shortcut, it's. Uh, Pretty good. Let's send it then. I like the distance driven stat on that uh, Bonksy stuff, oh shit, Bonksy stuff page. Like, even though it's definitely wrong because it only ti it's literally just distance times number of drivers, but uh,
Yeah, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. API stuff's hard. I've done API stuff before. It's hard. My first job after school was working on iOS apps. Uh, my role in that in a three-man team was basically we had a front-end dev, a back-end dev, and I was basically the middle-end dev. So I took the API, sent the calls, and linked it to the front-end that was basically for the most part already made. Actual app developer here. Mm, shit, oh shit, hold on. My glasses, I took my glasses off because they're hurting my face and I'm kind of sat, I'm kind of sat in an awkward position at the minute where my glasses are a bit useless because they're too short distance but I'm sat too far away because I'm sat too far away. I'm sat kind of too close that I still sort of need them. I don't know. They're hurting my ears. These headphones aren't deep enough, I don't think. They're good and they're comfortable in most ways, but they're a bit, bit shallow. To be fair, I've also had glasses on all day with my sunglasses on my bike, so my face hurts. LED and microcontroller blink. I mean, you made the art oh, rally thing. That's pretty good. That's a legitimate thing. I do actually need to edit it though, uh, so if you are going to edit it, please send me whatever you do, because uh, I want to I want to put the millis the seconds and milliseconds back into the tracks, into the countries, because I realise that especially for countries, well for everything really. Um, it's in hours and minutes. So for comparing, you need at least need the seconds. Because like I could, the the thing I was thinking was like, hold on, I could easily grind. If I was to grind speedruns of one of these categories, one of these twelve categories. With the current setup we've got, say I grind Group 4, Norway, in the snow. The current setup we've got, there is a chance that I wouldn't even shave a minute off of my time in PBs and would literally not see a difference. And that's just going to get even worse the better you are. But yeah, for comparing it needs to be seconds and milliseconds I, 
it was one of those things I was like thinking about it because I didn't really look at the stats too closely. I was just happy to see the total time and like because I was thinking of it in a total time way, I was thinking of it like your steam hours. You don't care about the seconds or the minutes of your steam hours. It's a it's a whole hour number. And uh, and I thought I was thinking about it. I was like, hold on. We literally have the milliseconds. The times are in bloody milliseconds. What are we doing? Ah, oh, nice. You better be careful with your GitHub name, otherwise someone might think you're insulting a programming language. Also, your GitHub profile picture is a penis with eyes. Your auto-generated GitHub profile picture is a fucking penis with eyes. That isn't... If you said you have a 8x8 eight eight pixel grid, draw me a cock and balls, that is what I would draw. They try to make faces and it's like kind of gone for a cat face, but it's totally just a cock and ball if you ignore the eyes. But it kind of looks like a cat's, uh, whatever, upside down Y shaped thing. But that is amazing. Your auto-generated gravatar is just cock and balls. Do you know what? I I have interviewed at a place when I still thought I wanted to be a programmer. I interviewed at a place. They told me, they said, what what motivates you to come to work other than money? Uh, you know, other than, you know, you need to make a living and money. What motivates you come, to come to work? And I thought, I thought about it for a second. I thought, I think I enjoy, I enjoy, I want to enjoy doing what I'm doing. And, uh, and having, having fun doing what I'm doing. And they literally told me point blank to my face. Oh, we don't have fun here. They still offered me the job. Despite, they wanted me, I was sick, I was 17 at the time. They wanted me to go fucking halfway across the country. They said he's travelling to, uh, this town, this city halfway across the country. A deal breaker for you. I say yes, yeah, it kind of is. Because I don't have a car. I legally can't drive. So even if I wanted a car I can't get one um, every, and every day there's no way I'd be able to get the train over there I mean driving would be two and a half hours <laughs> I didn't quite know that at the time but uh, you know driving's two and a half hours to that city from here uh, they also asked me because I wasn't exactly wearing the smartest thing I had a jeans and a polo shirt or something and they said oh we We'd require you to wear a suit and a tie. Is that a deal breaker for you? I said, absolutely, it is a deal breaker. Um, so, so this interview hasn't gone well, and then I still got the fucking job offer. I was thought, are you taking the piss? Are you actually taking the piss? But the reason was, the job offer was for a senior developer, and they wanted a, they wanted me as a sixteen year old to do it. And I went to and went to another place that did the same shit. They wanted me, they, they were like, oh, well, you've developed this thing, and we're quite, we, we think it's quite good. Because um, we saw, you know, in, in my CV I had my GitHub, and they said we thought it was quite good, and it uses the same technology that we're using. Could you go away and develop a, a photographing app? So it takes the camera, and you can press a button, and it saves a picture of what's on the, the webcam. And I went away, and I tried it, and I programmed it, and I, just, and I, I got stuck at a bit. I can't remember, and they get, they'd get they only given me a couple of days to make it. So I sent it back, and I said, Look, this is the bit I'm stuck at. I've got the camera up, it's it's bringing the camera up, it's showing it, it's kind of a pain in the arse, it's a bit janky to get the camera to accept the permissions. Um, yeah, maybe the only one that showed up. Uh, a bit janky to get the, the camera for the permissions. And it freezes half the time. It doesn't really work, basically. 
And I never got the chance to actually make it take a screenshot. <laughs> it just brought the camera up. That was all I could get working at the time. And they said, no, we're looking for someone with a bit more experience than you. I was thinking, I'm fucking 17. And you want someone who can lead a team at 17. And they were paying apprenticeship wage. With all of both of those jobs, they were either paying absolute bare minimum wage for the 17 year old or they were paying apprenticeship wage and you could tell that they weren't going to let you do the apprenticeship stuff because I'd done an apprenticeship already I knew what it entails and you are supposed to be out of your work to to do apprenticeship stuff for a large amount of time That's why they can pay you less, because you're supposed to be learning on the job, and you're supposed to be doing... It's supposed to be 25% of your time in the week is school, school work. We're actually supposed to de de allow you to dedicate a full day to school work. Not 20 25, 20%. They're supposed to allow you to dedicate, it should be, you know, either a morning and an afternoon, can, on the same day, two afternoons, whatever they want to give you should be dedicated to school and the closest I ever got to that was uh, my second apprenticeship at a warehouse where I had to go to the college for an afternoon for uh, a physical in-person lesson other than that didn't get a Yeah. Welcome to the world of managers. And it is pretty much we are looking for someone with 10 years of C++ experience. I mean, some of it is like, we're looking for 10 years of this experience and the programming language or app that they're using hasn't even been out 10 years. And then there's the ones that are like, we want a youthful crew. We want people that are, you know, between 25 and 30. And then they're asking for 10 years experience. And you're like, what? How am I supposed to have 10 years experience doing that? With that age? And quite often it would be professional experience as well, I noticed. Or at least when you turned up for an interview, it would be professional experience. The ones that were professional experience tended to be the ones that actually knew what they were talking about, though. Because there was some times where... 10 years experience... And it literally... If, you'd if you could prove you'd written a program with it 10 years ago and hadn't touched it since, they were fine. That's 10 years experience. Don't worry about the fact the version's changed. Don't worry about the fact that you wrote this uh, for a completely different architecture. Don't worry about the fact that nothing actually means anything anymore. You wrote a Python 2 program in 2007? Mate, that's 15 years experience these days. It is quite funny though, because uh, you get that... Oh, you've got, you've got that experience. You've got 10 years experience programming, because, you know, you did it 10 years ago. Um... But then for cycling, people won't let me have 10 years experience, uh, 20 years experience cycling. Despite the fact that I did my first, although it was a triathlon, I did my first bike race at five and a half. So I've got nigh on 20 years experience since I did my first bike race. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can be a better programmer than someone with more experience. Experience doesn't technically mean anything. 
It's how good's the experience. It's like how good's the training. You know? I do more riding than a lot of people who are faster on a bike than me. In general, more riding means more fast. Training is, the base of all training is, uh, is volume. But I ride like a twat <laughs> and ride BMX and, you know, if you put my hours down, uh, half, of, uh, half the time I'm riding is riding like a tosser in fields. It does something for sometimes, but uh, it's not not everything. Two five. Crackalacking. Thank you very much, Turbo. Let's. I did not win many stages on that one. 